Hello and welcome to National Focus. I am Julian Morris. In the headlines, the Ministry of Housing and Decreed collaborate to enhance resilience in the housing sector. Government renews its focus on youth involvement in agriculture and community leaders' consultation expected to strengthen child protection in the Kalinago Territory. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. Welcome back. Government continues to make strides in its quest to make Dominica the first climate resilient nation in the world. With focus placed on the development of infrastructure around the island, the government's ongoing housing revolution has been a focal point of investments in resiliency. As part of efforts to build this resiliency, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development in collaboration with the Climate Resilience Execution Agency for Dominica, Creed, hosted a training of trainees workshop on Thursday, March 23, at the Goodwill Parish Hall in a bid to ensure that individuals who are actively involved in the construction of homes across the island are compliant with the building codes. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, Dr. Kira Paul, stated that this workshop is part of government's commitment to providing safe and resilient housing for all citizens. The government of Dominica committed to ensure that families and households are returned to safe and inclusive and resilient homes following our experience of Hurricane Maria. Part of that journey um, requires us to build the capacity to ensure that the persons who are involved in, the professionals really who are involved in the built environment are well equipped um, and are compliant of course to the building codes. Dr. Paul explained that these building codes were developed following the impact of natural disasters in the Caribbean in 2017. She says the devastation caused by these weather events was considered by the OECS when developing the building codes. The OECS building codes of 2015 has been revised. Um, of course, many of the Caribbean countries' experience of the 2017 natural disasters were taken into consideration. And so the World Bank, with the support of European Union, um, developed a Caribbean physical and financial resilience building project um, under the Caribbean Disaster Risk Financing Technical Assistance um, facility. This one of the outcome activities is the training of trainers to ensure that we have building professionals who are familiar with the building codes and who can impart the knowledge um, that they have with respect to the building codes to other professionals within the communities that they, they, they operate. The government of Dominica has established a climate resilience recovery plan, CRRP, under which 20 targets were identified. One of those targets is that 90% of all homes are built in accordance with resilient building codes. Chief Executive Officer of Creed, Ms. Francine Barron, believes training will help government in reaching that target after adopting the OECS building codes. Under our Climate Resilience Recovery Plan, we have identified 20 targets that Dominica wants to reach by 2030. Two of those relate to zero fatalities from extreme weather events and 90% of our housing structures built or retrofitted to resilient building codes. Now, after Hurricane Maria, we would have adopted the OECS building codes. And it is important for us to all be aware of what is in those building codes. There are a number of improvements to regulations uh, for our building sector. So it includes, for example, uh, uh, better safety on, on site. It includes uh, more frequent inspections by the physical planning department. Uh, it includes uh, having um, climate change adaptation practices in included in designs of buildings um, and a number of other uh, requirements. Meanwhile, World Bank sector leader for sustainable development in the Caribbean region, Mr. J.B. Collier, says workshops like these are part of disaster risk management, which is important for sustainable development. One of the areas that's very important to sustainable development is disaster, disaster risk management and helping countries and the people in them fortify themselves and prepare for um, 
disasters so that instead of responding to by rebuilding we prepare things ahead of ahead of time and so this particular event is incredibly important because it's teaching construction professionals both on the financial side and the construction physical work side private sector public sector on how to build better and more sustainable housing housing that will sustain hurricanes, earthquakes, floods. The Ministry of Agriculture is on its way to relaunching the National Association of Youth in Agriculture, NIA, as government continues to create avenues to include youth in the development of the sector. Parliamentary Secretary with responsibility for the development of community agro-enterprises in the Ministry of Agri Agriculture, Fisheries and Blue and Green Economy, Honorable Lakia Joseph, stated that this decision came about after listening to the challenges faced by youth in agriculture. Honorable Joseph explained that she, along with the Ministry, has been making the effort to meet the agro-processors and other young farmers around the island, as government remains committed to making use of the talents and creativity of the youth in the sector. The government is determined to leverage the talents and skills of our youth as a game changer for agriculture in Dominica. And going through the different regions and speaking to different people, the ministry has undertaken consultation on the matter before our team came. However, our team has a unique position in that they, and when I say they, I mean, I think my minister, Mr. Roy, Honorable Roy, and the PS, PS Severe, um, were formed in an active members of the National Association of Youth in Agriculture, which was formed in 2003. And together with several of these past members, led by Honorable Minister Roye, we have engaged these adult professionals who are now leaders across the agricultural sector, and we have decided to undertake a media launch of initiatives to reactivate youth participation in agriculture with direct support from the government. The ministry will provide financial support to young people who have shown an interest in agriculture and specifically agro-processing. Interested youth will have to present a business plan to show their idea and the challenges that they face and what assistance will be required from government. So we'll initiate the request for expression of interest um, in which young persons will be able to seek financial support to invest in agriculture and the agricultural enterprises and it will be invite and they will be invited to express to us the specific areas of interest on a pre-designed form that can be filled out online or in person they will then indicate the type of investment plan to make in a specific area of agriculture fisheries or agribusiness the problem the challenges and the opportunities that they are seeking to address or engage um, in agriculture and they will let us know exactly where they are and where they intend to be in that media launch. Other institutions such as the Dominica Youth Business Trust and the Dominica State College will be engaged in this initiative in a bid to target a comprehensive group of interested youth. We'll basically be relaunching NIA, the National Association of Youth and Agriculture, and we'll bring on the DYBT, the Dominica State College, and mentorship from the Ministry of Agriculture to actually get that comprehensive sense of how do we target these youth and and this is what we're trying to do and I believe I am excited about it I am I am energized I am and I am ready to work with the youth um, with this initiative. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Social Services has partnered with the Child Abuse Prevention Unit, the Ministry of Kalinago Upliftment and UNICEF to introduce a community leaders consultation. The consultation got underway on Thursday, March 23 at the Sinecure Resource Center. The aim of this initiative is to collectively involve the community in strengthening child protection systems across the Kalinago Territory. Minister of State in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services, Honorable Dr. Cassandra Williams, reminds us that children are the future and need to be protected. Protecting them means protecting their physical, mental and psychosocial needs to safeguard their futures and to safeguard the future of our country. The government places great emphasis on the welfare and protection of children, of our children. 
To date, several pieces of legislation geared towards the protection of all children and which will give children access to vital social services and justice have been drafted. Dr. Williams called on the participants to work together to identify the challenges faced in their communities and solutions to determine the way forward. We see you as catalysts, as leaders, trailblazers in the community, people who respect and command respect, people who we know can make a difference, who can work in a coordinated way towards child protection goals, and I believe you have brilliant ideas of how to prevent and respond to, ch to child protection risks. With your support, we can build a better Kalinago territory. We know that you are capable of doing what's right for you, your family, and community. It is our hope that at the end of this consultation, you will put all that you've learned into action. The Kalinago Territory is one of the priority areas for addressing child abuse in Dominica. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Environment, Rural Modernization, Kalinago Upliftment and Constituency Empowerment, Mrs. Sil Silvani Burton, says it is time to take steps to improving child safety. Let us lay the platform, let us see how we move forward in building a better community for ourselves, but we are going so for our children. And um, for us, this is very, very critical. Every time I see the list of communities with the high numbers of child abuse um, cases and the Kalinago territory is always on it, um, for me, it's a little pain in my heart. So I really want to see how we can work together, work with UNICEF and work with other agencies too, whatever we can do. I am certain that we'll be willing to do it. Um, I truly want to thank UNICEF for the assistance that they continue to give to to the Social Welfare Division, Child Protection. UNICEF has worked in over 150 countries to protect children. The vision of UNICEF's Child Protection Strategy is to create a world where all children are free from violence, exploitation, abuse, neglect, and harmful practices. It recognizes that solutions work best when they're driven by people, when people are the architects of them, when they monitor, when they implement, when they change. And this is why when we got the invitation to work in the Kalanago territory, of course, our answer was yes. Um, yes, we can spread our wings wide in terms of looking at um, throughout Dominica, and that's what we will be doing and what we have been doing for the last um, couple of years. But given that this is something you wanted to do uh, with the support of the Child Protection Department, our answer, of course, was yes. And I think this is an opportunity, 2023, moving forward for us to get it right. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services continues to prioritize the protection of Dominica's future, the children. The ministry is looking to implement more community consultations across Dominica to address the, dr the pressing issues of child abuse. A major water project is expected to highlight significant improvements in water reliability across the island. The Water Sector Strategic Development Project is one of the priority water projects for government and DOASCO. Over 70 million EC dollars has been in invested in the rollout of this project. This development will take a sectoral approach when addressing the sustainability of water in Dominica. The Water Sector Strategic Development Plan really seeks to build resilience in the Dominica water sector. Now remember I say the Dominica water sector, yes. not just the WASCO. Mm -hmm. So it looks at the, the operations at the ministry level, looks at the WASCO operations, what needs to be done to, to help beef up the WASCO as well. So for example, studies that were done, a consultant was, was contracted you know, under that fund, and um, the, the, the um, consultant really is the Fickner Water and Transportation GmbH of Germany. An aspect of the study conducted by the consultants focused on areas needed to be strengthened within DOASCO and at the various ministries. Mr. Etinov spoke to the major component of the water sector strategic development project. The major component of that project really is to implement strategic initiatives in many water systems in Dominica to build that level of resistance or resilience. So they've looked at the Roseau Valley and, and they, they use what is referred to as the infrastructure prioritization framework analysis, a World Bank tool for prioritizing um, development in waters, water systems and water sector 
not just in Dominica, but all over. A number of systems were highlighted for intervention. These areas were selected for implementation following the application of a multi-criteria infrastructure prioritization methodology. The Rozo Valley mm -hmm. is critical among those. Calibishi, not a critical system. Cassibus, Grand Four Mondrian River Siric, the West Coast, I'm um, looking at rebuilding the Kulibistri intake there and supplying water to Grand Savan Salisbury, um, among others. Of course, Water Area 1, and, and, and so forth. So a number of new water treatment plants mm -hmm. would be, um, would be de developed and implemented. Number of intakes would be impacted. New water storage tanks, for example, for Cassibus alone. Yes. The storage tank for Cassibus is 200,000 gallons, designed and costed and all of that. So that's what we intend to do for in Cassibus and we hope very shortly. The project will bolster Dawasco's efforts in building the res resilience in the water system. You are watching National Focus. More when we return. Welcome back. Managing Director of the Dominica Geothermal Development Company, Fred John, says an essential component of the project is the establishment of a transmission network. Mr. John says this is the third phase of the project after the production and reinjection wells are completed. Mm -hmm. In an, an ideal world, we would just connect this power plant to Loda, Loda Power Station. You know, Dominica has a hydro power station yes, yes. half a kilometer away from the proposed power site location. Mm -hmm. So. That would be ideal. Um, and the plan, yes, is to connect to Loda Power Station, but because of the nature of the electricity grid mm -hmm. in the area, it is not sufficient to carry the output of the power plant. Mr. John says the existing grid remains, but it is necessary to build a new network to move the power from the site of generation to Domlek's main switching centers, which would be in Foncolet and further up north at Sugarloaf. Another important component of the process is keeping the public abreast of new developments on the project. To inform them about the plans, by the plans, the route, the mm -hmm. technology used, and the possible how construction would go, so they actually get to understand during construction, they can expect traffic and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening now. And it's very important that um, people understand this and participate because this, out of these consultations, that feeds into the tender process yes. for the contractors mm -hmm. and it, it really decides how well um, or how little an impact this has on people. For a project of this nature, an Environmental Impact Assessment or EIA must be conducted. For the power station and the wells, yes. Mm -hmm. For the transmission network is happening right now. Mr. John says in order to give a definite date for the construction of a power plant itself, a number of factors must be taken into consideration. Phase one of the transmission network is expected by the end of 2024. The next phase is the construction of the power plant itself. Mm -hmm. The power plant is, as I said, is the easiest part of this all. Okay. Um, it takes about 18 to 24 months, we've been told, to build a power plant. 18 to 24 months, yes. But the, the, the key here is starting when. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's what people understand. Yeah. <laughs> start, when do you start the clock? Mm -hmm. So you start the clock on this when you have a commercial agreement in place with your partner, with your commercial partners. Mr. John says it would be premature to identify the commercial partners at this time as engagements are continuing. If all goes as planned, Dominicans could have geothermal power by 2025. The geothermal project is expected to provide a cheaper source of energy than that which is generated by fossil fuels. First and foremost, we should be able to eliminate the fuel surcharge. Because if you're not using diesel to generate under normal circumstances, you may still use the generators for emergencies or backups, but day to day, if you're not using diesel, you really do not need a fuel surcharge. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we've all seen what has happened to fuel surcharge over the last 12 months. Yes. It's, it's, it's a roller coaster, right? Mm -hmm. So stability on your price is a big, will be a big win. Even beyond the fuel surcharge, again, that's where the commercial agreement is so important and the interest rates and all of that, hopefully you should get a further reduction in the price of the electricity. 
Renewable energy from a fully operational geothermal power plant and the anticipated reduction in energy cost is expected to stimulate significant economic growth. The resource we have in Eroso Valley is much more than Dominica would need for probably several decades at just normal consumption. Okay. So this, if it's developed the way we hope, should be another revenue source for the country. Okay. okay, so all of this investment you say no, all of this 10 years of development, it's for more than just a small power plant. You build an infrastructure for the future for the country. Yes. And then you think about what would happen with lower electricity and more stable prices in Dominica. Mm -hmm. It hopefully will stimulate additional economic growth. Julian Morris for the Government Information Service. Dominica Youth Business Trust DYBT, in collaboration with the Ministry of Culture, Youth, Sports and Community Development, has awarded grants to social entrepreneurs in Dominica under the Social Enterprise Incubator SEI program. Minister for Culture, Youth, Sports and Community Development, Honorable Greta Roberts, commended the efforts of the youth in making a difference in society. Today, the DYBT is pleased to hand over $45,000 in grants under the Social Entrepreneurship Incubate, Enterprise Incubator, a program that commenced two years ago with the intention of developing, launching, and supporting social entrepreneurs. With a total of 10 young entrepreneurs trained in the concept of social entrepreneurship over three cohorts, I have been advised by the DYBT team that the incubator was indeed a success. You are now equipped with the requisite knowledge to successfully operate a social enterprise. The SEI program was conceptualized by the collaborative effort of Barbados and St. Lucia Youth Business Trust and funded by the European Union. Since the launch of the SEI program in May 2021 in Dominica, DYBT has successfully trained 19 individuals in the concept of social entrepreneurship. Coordinator of the DYBT, Mr. Philip Rule, says the social mission of the entrepreneurs will leave a significant impact on Dominica. Today is a special day as we come together to celebrate the hard work and dedication of those of you who have received grants and to officially hand over the grants to the recipients. The entrepreneurs who will be receiving grants are a special type of entrepreneur, a social entrepreneur. So these grants will not only assist you in developing your business venture, but also due to the nature of this business, this type of entrepreneurship, it will also benefit the communities through the social causes that you have decided to champion. Your hard work and dedication has not gone unnoticed, and we are proud to be a part of this momentous occasion. Social Enterprise Administrator Mr. Eamon Gibbons relayed the success of the SEI program. This incubator program was designed to develop, launch, and support entrepreneurs in the concept of social entrepreneurship. Teaching youth entrepreneurs that business is not only for profit, but can be used to alleviate social issues within their communities. The first cohort started with five social entrepreneurs with social missions aimed at the environment, unemployment, and uplifting marginalized youth in their communities. Cohort 2 saw four social entrepreneurs trained and supported with social missions of giving back to the community, internship programs in sewing, landscaping and lawn care, and media marketing. Ten out of 11 accepted trainees of the cohort of cohort 3 completed the social enterprise training and were able to access grants after presenting their business implementation plans. Six trainees of cohort 3 received grants valued at $5,000 EC dollars DYBT also extended grant assistance to four more social entrepreneurs from cohorts one and two. Grant funding will go towards startup cost and upscaling their social missions within their enterprises. Mr. Gibbon says as the SEI program nears completion, DYBT has been working with the government of Dominica and other donor agencies to ensure the continuity of the program. The lineup of artists to perform at the 2023 Jazz and Creole Festival has been announced. Aliyah Martin has more. The anticipated lineup for the 12th edition of Jazz and Creole has been released. Jazz and Creole has always been known as a marketable event to welcome patrons to Dominica from across the world 
more specifically the French territories. It is a family-oriented event with a fusion of jazz and Creole music, exquisite foods and culture. This event was conceptualized in 2010 and is hosted annually except in 2020 and 2021 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Jazz and Creole returned in 2022 and is expected to be even bigger this year. The concept of the celebration this year is welcome to Portsmouth, the land of Jazz and Creole. We have now given Portsmouth the tag of the home of Dominica's Jazz and Creole. We are very pleased that this festival, both the main stage and the fringe events, have been embraced by the local population and that they continue to support the town of Portsmouth. I certainly want to encourage all residents that are going to jazz to invite a friend from overseas to come into Dominica to experience the life at Fort Shirley. Certainly the vibe of jazz is something to be experienced. Of course, we'll be looking out for the fashionistas and the outfits at main stage. Here's what patrons can expect from this year's Jazz and Creole Festival. Welcome to Portsmouth. Come join us on April 30 at the Cabritz National Park in Dominica for Jazz and Creole 2023. Jumpstart the festivities with Dominica's premier dance band, The Swinging Stars. Therefore, the authentic jazz performances from Dominica's best jazz musicians, the Island Jazz Collective. Then it's time to soak in the amazing voice of Haitian-American songstress Felicia Ross. from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, experience the energetic performance of the hip-hop duo Black Violin. Closing the curtains, we take it local. Dominica's youngest and the baddest, The Signal Band. Yeah. Something stronger than preacher, man, deeper than religion. Visit DominicaFestivals.com for tickets and event information. Circle the date, April 30. It's jazz and Creole in the Nature Island, Dominica. Early bird tickets went on sale as of Tuesday evening and has since been sold out. Jazz and Creole 2023 is carded for April 30 with a dress code entitled Rainforest Fantasy. Alia Martin for the Government Information Service. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis.dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News Production team, I am Julian Morris. Thanks for watching. <laughs>